Welcome back to the KSAT News at 9. We're continuing our effort tonight to fight fear with facts as the coronavirus pandemic continues to impact communities across the globe. Infectious disease doctor, Dr. Ruth Bergeron from the Long School of Medicine at UT Health San Antonio back with us to help us get answers to our coronavirus questions tonight. Uh, Dr. Bergeron, thank you again for joining us. Off the top, I want to talk about how can San Antonio residents help? We talked about blood drives in the past few days. We've talked about a lot of stuff, but you have a very good idea of how San Antonians can help specifically over the next two days. Right, well, first I wanna reiterate, the number one way you can help is by not getting infected. And that involves uh, li listening to the directives and staying home and working safe as has been recommended. But we have uh, planning for possible surges in cases, and we may face a critical need for protective gear for healthcare workers. And so UT Health is working to support our clinical providers by facilitating the collection of supplies of the, this protective gear, and we're asking the public to help. So what we're looking for is N95 respirator masks, other face masks like surgical masks, they can also use masks that are used by painters, carpenters, and hobbyists. We ask, we prefer that it's not be used masks. We ask for medical or disposable gloves, eye protection goggles, but no swim goggles, face shields, and thermometers. So again, original unopened items are preferred, but not required, but don't donate used gloves or masks. Right. And these can be donated um, for two days, starting tomorrow from 7 in the morning till 6 in the evening at 7703 Floyd Curl Drive. And there is a guard shack that's just off of Floyd Curl. If you pull in there, you'll be directed accordingly. Great. And that's actually one of the big questions we get from our viewers a lot in this whole thing is what can I do to help? So N95 masks, uh, uh, surgical gloves, thermometers, face shields, uh, just to prepare if those things become, uh, you know, if, if the health, if the surge that, that could come comes, those things are needed, correct? And it's not just N95 masks, it's what we call surgical masks or procedure masks. Those are the softer ones with the little loops that go around your ear. Yeah. We're looking and for those too. Any of those would help. All right, first question, uh, next question from our viewer viewers, does a person develop an immunity to COVID-19 if they become infected and recover? So the good news about that is yes, and that's really why we have hope that a vaccine will help us. But what we don't know at this time is how long that immunity will last, whether the virus will mutate, and whether one vaccine would be good for a long time. So there's still a lot to learn about this virus but we remain very optimistic about the fact that humans can develop immunity to it, at least for a period of time. Yeah. Next question. Is it accurate to say that taking ibuprofen for fevers, pains, aches, while you have COVID-19 will only worsen the symptoms? I've actually seen this reported online in social media as well. So that report is stemming from some observations that were really made um, in a limited number of patients, a particular physician in France has been promoting this. Um, we would prefer at this time until we sort it out that people use acetaminophen, which is Tylenol essentially, according to the instructions on the label, on the label um, for any aches and pains that they might have. Now, if people have a need for their ibuprofen or their non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug as directed by a physician, they should continue to use those as directed. At this time, it's not really, we can't say with confidence that what you asked in your question is correct. Yeah. But we're directing to preferentially use acetaminophen instead of ibuprofen. Great. All right, next question. I had viral meningitis more than a year ago. Am I more susceptible to COVID-19? So first of all, I'm sorry that you had viral meningitis, but that's not one of the risk factors for COVID-19. And unless you had viral meningitis because of some underlying condition that predisposed you to it, such as some sort of immunodeficiency, 
The answer is no, that episode by itself does not put you at high risk for getting COVID-19. Great, all right, next question. Should people working at drive throughs and at stores be wearing gloves? Probably a good idea. If you have the gloves and you can put them on and take them off properly, I think that's wise and I recommend it. The thing is when you remove the gloves, to remove them without contaminating your hands and always to do a hand hygiene before you put them on and throw them away when you're done and do hand hygiene again after you're done using the gloves. Can the, the, the qu next question, can the virus be spread through vents? So what we know is that uh, the virus can become aerosolized, meaning that someone who has a cough or a sneeze, and there's, there are respiratory droplets that spew out, and those aerosols can last for a while. And, and some estimates are that they can last a couple of hours, maybe up to three hours. If somebody was coughing or sneezing right where there was an air intake, then theoretically, yes. But here's the good news. It's not likely that that's how the virus is spreading. Yeah, that is good news. All right, final question for you. In light of the order to stay home, work safe, what would you tell people in Bear County and San Antonio and the surrounding areas tonight about this latest emergency declaration? I think we should be grateful that we have enlightened leadership, that our community is taking action. I know this is dire. It's difficult for everybody. These are extraordinary times. We've never lived through times like these. But if we do nothing, we know for sure we're going to have rapid community spread and overwhelming our hospital system. So believe it, when you stay home and you don't go out and interact with other people, you are saving lives. And please, San Antonio, please remember to be kind to one another. We can't control what's happening to us, but we can certainly control how we treat one another. Love that message. Dr. Ruth Bergeron from UT Health San Antonio, the Long School of Medicine. Thank you for your time once again tonight.